all the black women, I'm talking to you. All the mamas, all the aunties, all the educators, listen up. There is a new web series out called STEM Queens, specifically geared to young black girls to expose them to and get them interested in all things STEM. There are awesome careers and a whole lot of opportunity in the area of STEM. Drop down in the description box below and subscribe to the YouTube channel and check out an episode of STEM Queens. Each eye should be a sister, not a twin. So, well, my cousins, Queens is a web-based series for young women of color, showing them successful, interesting, amazing black women who are killing the STEM game. Today, as our guest, we have Miss Fig O'Reilly. She is the first black Miss Universe Ireland. She's a NASA data knot and now a correspondent on Mission Unstoppable. Welcome, Fig. Thanks for having me, Jatia. I Y'all, so I just got through watching this last episode of Housewives, shit, not Housewives, but Basketball Wives, and I'm here to let you know y'all might as well get ready to call me colorist, racist, ignorant, and every other phobic and ism there is out there because I walked away from this episode kind of frustrated with OG. Want to talk about it? Here you go. So it ain't even no need in me jumping down into the chronological order of the episode and I'm just gonna speak on what's on my heart right now after watching this last episode of Basketball Wives. Um, I walked away frustrated with OG and the reason why I'm frustrated because it just feels like, it feels like nothing anybody can say is going to be satisfactory for her. Um, Jen was sitting at the table. Jen was simply trying to express that I thought that it was somewhat noble of, of, of Kristen to come over and be the bigger person, considering the fact that we did not get along at all off rip to try to come talk to you. And OG instantly cut her off, shut it down, and wanted to make all these things. It's not noble when you're the person who did something wrong. This, 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 this. And I'm gonna take it back real quick to last week's episode and granted, I have not heard the full recording of whatever OG put on her Instagram, and I won't be held accountable for that. I'm here to review the show, and I'm reviewing what's on the show. But her attitude is bad, y'all. Her attitude is bad. Jen is on her side. Jen is one of the girls that is on your side. So why do you have an attitude with Jen? And granted, you keep saying it's not your job to explain to these women um, what they've done. It's you can't have it all ways. You can't have it forward, backward, sideways, up, top, down, bottom. You're accusing the girl of being colorist. She's asking you, they're asking you for examples of what they've done that is colorist. Then you want to back up and say, it's not my job to educate you. You need to educate yourself. And maybe you're right. Maybe she is right. But it would seem to me that in the spirit of reconciliation, if you've got the answer right here in your hand, and this person sitting right here asking you for the answer, that you would just give it to them. Not giving it to them is further keeping up the mess and the confusion when it can be quelled at its core. Secondly, it honestly feels like, in my opinion, that OG is just hell-bent on being mad. You just hell-bent on being mad. Anytime anybody bring up any type of conversation about building a bridge between the two sides, you frown up your face, you got so much to say, this, that, and the third, and it's just off-putting. I'm sorry, and I will not be bow, brow, beaten into acquiescing into anything about fucking OG. She's got a bad goddamn attitude, okay? 
She has a bad attitude. And yes, Evelyn and them too, they got a bad attitude too. All of them got a bad damn attitude. But the way she is carrying herself is not conducive to any sort of reconciliation amongst this group of girls. So my next question then becomes, why are you even here? Now I gotta take it a step backwards because I had to take a moment to educate myself. And I said after last week, I had never heard the word featureism before. I didn't. That doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make me a stupid person. My life just has not been one of such that it's required that word to be used in any form or context. I had never heard of featureism before. Upon further conversation and upon further investigation, I've come to realize that featureism is a nuance of colorism. I got it. I got it. But I also did another post, y'all, that I uh, on my Instagram, and I want to ask this question to y'all, all right? And please be open-minded when I say this. At what point are we allowed to call anybody across any race ugly and it simply be that? Because if I was to call an Asian person ugly, their rebuttal could be, well, you're calling me ugly because what about me is ugly? Is it because my eyes slant? That's featureism. If you call OG ugly, people are assuming it's because of her lips and her nose. That's featureism. If I call, um, I don't know, a Jewish person ugly, they could say it's because I got a big nose and it's featureism. If I call it, you know what I'm saying? Like, so at what? I need the litmus test. I need the litmus test for when it goes beyond you just calling somebody ugly and unattractive and you being a featurist or a colorist. Now, I've also realized, and I think what the problem is, and I'm willing to admit this, I think what the problem is with myself and my previous review of the situation and the other ladies in the group is that there's some subconscious programming and some subconscious indoctrination that may be lending itself to certain biases. And I think the reason why myself and a lot of other people may be having a problem directly calling it racist, colorist, or featurist is because no one has been blatant, direct, or intentional with it. Now, if you were to say to me that there may be some subconscious biases going on with this group and even with myself, I'm open to that. I'm open to it because upon further reading and further assessment of the situation, I realized that in certain instances, OG does have some claims. She does have some valid claims in certain instances. I accept that. I acknowledge that. I'm saying it out loud. In that same vein, while it's wrong, I think it's been played up to the max. I think it's been played up to the max and I think it's been weaponized to the max because you don't fucking like Evelyn now. I do. I do. I think yes, it's happened to a degree. And I also think it's been played up to the max and been weaponized as the ultimate form of get back. Additionally, in my previous video, I said this. I said, OG has experienced something in her life that has left her traumatized and why she's super sensitive to this issue. And lo and behold, she had a whole damn breakdown in that damn kitchen. Not to mention, I'm sure OG has experienced a lot of 
colorism. Hell, I've experienced it. A lot of colorism in her life. And I'm sure she's been picked on majority of her life for her looks throughout grade school and high school. So I'm sure she did. So that is a sore spot for her. Then when you layer that with the pretty girl click won't accept me, it compounds the issue. But here is one thing I will not backtrack on. Oh, she has a horrible attitude. She's got a bad fucking attitude. Independent of the colorist stuff, who's right or who's wrong. It ain't a damn one of y'all watch this last episode who can say she's even conducting herself in any type of spirit of reconciliation. Her energy is just off-putting, off-rip when it comes to this particular situation and the other girls. And maybe she's got a right to be. I don't know. The last thing I'm going to say on OG before I get into the review is I think that OG would find more favor with this friend group if she would be more vulnerable. And this may sound ignorant and more feminine in her demeanor because the reality of the situation is all of that arrogance, all of that sass, all of that attitude, and I am going to use the word aggressive. Because you cannot tell me anything that she did with Jen at that table wasn't short of aggressive. It was. Hostile, aggressive, mean, rude, whichever fucking word you want to use that fits where your spirit is on this issue, you fucking use it. Whatever it was, it was wrong and it was bad. And it was negative. All of that shit is a cover up for insecurity. Anytime you find people who is rude with all that attitude, it is a cover up for insecurity. And the proof, the proof is how she broke down in that damn table scene and had to go lock herself in the bathroom and she wasn't even being picked on. She was retelling the story that she had control of and completely fucking fell apart. Which suggests to me, you're not this beast. You're not so hard. You're not so arrogant. You're not so confident. And that's okay. You're human. And I think that if you would show the human side of yourself more and drop some of those layers, it would be easy to get along with you. Now let me give her her credit. Those girls didn't give her a chance from the start. They did it. Pick it on her wig, pick it on her hair. It's just one big fucked up situation, but I'm sorry. There's enough blame to go around for all of the ladies in this situation, and OG isn't innocent in this situation by any means. Now I have a question. Featureism is a nuance of colorism, but it would seem to me that color would trump features. And if I'm wrong, let me know that I'm wrong. I don't have a problem being wrong. I'm not gonna die because I'm wrong. My bills are not gonna go unpaid because I'm wrong. But you have racism, colorism, featureism. So at the end of the day, regardless of OG's features, it would seem to me that if colorism was truly an issue in the group, then Malaysia, Jennifer, and Kristen, especially Jennifer and Malaysia because they have been around for so long, would have experienced it in some varying form. Or maybe they did and they didn't recognize it. Or it's the learning lesson that I'm to be learning here is that featureism can sometimes trump color. And if it is, please explain it to me. I don't know everything and I'm willing to learn. But y'all cannot browbeat people for not understanding some of these new concepts that have been very new to us. And it don't make any of us who don't understand it stupid, 
ignorant, or anything in between. We just don't fucking know. I mean, hell, there's countless, there is, there is a bunch of damn trivia in areas of my interest that I could stump y'all bitches in and it don't make y'all stupid. If I ask any one of y'all right now what was the gestation period of a hamster, you wouldn't be able to tell me. But I know it's 16 days because I used to make them and I had an interest in them. So when people don't know something, that don't make them dumb and ignorant and stupid and you need to educate yourself. You're not better than somebody because you have more interest in a subject area and you know more about it than the other person does. Good for you. I never had any aspirations on being no damn sociologist. So I don't claim to know every damn thing about it, but I know what I feel, and I know what I see, and I know human behavior to a varying degree, and I know that part of OG's issue far transcends colorism. Bitch, they just don't like you. And it ain't got shit to do with your color. Because you are not the easiest person to like. And I don't know if you are a Gemini, it's the Gemini side of you, because when Norea and Nia came in, and she was sitting there talking, I enjoyed her. When she was sitting at the table explaining her life and her Nigerian food, I enjoyed her. But y'all cannot admit, there's another part of OG that's just very freaking off-putting, and I'ma leave it at that. So fine, if we got to accept the fact that they are colorists and she's experiencing colorism, we also need to throw in there while we spit down facts that you also got a badass fucking attitude that makes it very easy to colorize your ass and not like you. Um, but I will say it is fucked up that they didn't let OG sit on that stage um, that last go round, and that's one of those instances where I'll give it to her because I stand by this too and I'll never take this back and I'm going to take this to my grave Evelyn Lozada is the most violent person who's ever been on reality TV I don't give a damn when you take a full champagne bottle and sling it across the room to somebody's face that is a different level of violence I further contend Evelyn Lozada is one of the most violent people that has ever graced a reality TV stage and I love her to death. She my homegirl. Tammy Roman is number two. Whooped up every ass with was on basketball wise. Anyway, the episode opens up and Kristen and Jen talking. And I don't blame Jen for telling Kristen she don't want to go over there. Them girls, them girls treated Jen as bad. Everybody over there turned on damn Jen. But Jen has also got to realize that her mouth got her in a lot of damn trouble. Don't just make it seem like them girls just ganged up on you. You ran your mouth about everybody. They business, they children, they marriage, they relationship, and that's why your ass is not like. Shanice comes over, and Kristen goes over her combo that she had with Jen, and Shani lets it be known that she don't have no problem with you, and if Jen holding on to comments from a year ago, a year and a half ago, then that's on her. Shouts out to Shanice, she looks good or whatever, and didn't know mama was a yoga instructor. Um, the ladies began doing their little exercise or whatever the case may be, and I love the juxtaposition between OG doing football training and they was playing body yaddy 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 and the other ladies having a very zen moment. Um, Malaysia shares that she's open to talk to Jackie. The, uh, you know, this review is damn near over because I got the meats and potatoes out. The ladies urging Liza to have fun. Girl, she need to have fun. Take some shots. Let your hair down. Stop talking about Lamar. Whatever the case may be. Now you're in the array to show up. This is going to be interesting. They got two Memphis girls. Uh, one of them in a confession of the child. You can tell they're from Memphis because she had her changing faces ponytail on. She looked like Cassandra from Changing Faces with her neck stuff. I'm like, girl, you wasn't looking basketball wise confessional ready. Um, but let me shut up because she brown and it might make me colorist if I talk about her ponytail. God knows you can't critique nobody appearance these days without being colorist. Um, and I don't talk about Evelyn clothes when I'm talking about the brown skin girl clothes. I don't want to be considered a colorist, so let me stop while I'm ahead. Um, Jackie talks to Evelyn, and then Jackie starts crying when she finds out that Malaysia is open to talking to Jackie. You know, I have an issue with adults 
that run around and try to act hard. Listen, if you love somebody, you better fucking hold on to their ass. And if you love somebody that relationship meant something to you, you better damn fight for it until you can't fight no damn more. Life is too damn short to be missing out on experiences with people who enriched your life at one point or another. Because you you know, Jackie was walking around like she was unfazed by it, and then you sat there and had a whole damn breakdown. Um The ladies wake up the next day, Liza is hungover. They nervous about the new girls that Jackie about to bring over. Then we find out in the trailer that one of the girls is a stalker and, and, and is connected to Phoebe through her ex Lance. And I'm just like, damn, just when I thought we was going to get some drama free shit, all of this is coming on. And lo and behold, that's about why they cast them damn girls. And I knew it was too damn good to be true. Malaysia says, let's cut the bullshit and her and Jackie go outside to talk. And then it goes to be continued. Therefore, this review is to be continued. That's all I got. I ain't got no more. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll call y'all hoes later. Bam!